like it. How your training been going? to get back to doing what I'm doing, man. You know, like I tell people, uh, this is my addiction. My training and my fighting and my, my constant competition, that's my addiction, man. That shit's it with me. It's nothing else to it, you know. Uh, when I'm given an opportunity, uh, whenever we get one, you know, I'm going to sh showcase the new me in the cage, you know. And that's just that. And that's more there is to it, man. I'm always, I've always been a man of very few words. I don't, I don't. Younger me talked a lot. Now that you know, when you've been here for a while, you've been on this earth for a while, and you see how things go. You know, the 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 saying "actions speak louder than words" holds true. So I've just been quiet. But I guess I should start making a little noise. I mean, but it is what it is. It's my opportunity is coming. When it comes, I'm going to take it. What type of uh, opponent are you looking for? I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter, man. It's just I'm looking for somebody to sign the contract. It's nothing against nobody. You know, I just know I need to redeem myself, not only in the jiu-jitsu world, but as well as in the MMA world. Completely different guy y'all talking to now from three, four years ago, man. Uh, completely refocused, rejuvenated, and that's just it. I actually grew up over here too. I uh, stayed in the house over here. This is Pasadena. Some of the most legendary street fights went down over here. Right across the street from this church. Let's just show you how bad we were as kids. Shout out to everybody in all my whole eight mile township family, man. Y'all, y'all definitely made made this. Y'all made this guy. Y'all did. Everybody. I'm not gonna sing a lot of specific person, but y'all definitely made this guy. Y'all had a big hand in creating the bad guy. I see that y'all just took like you know a recent tragic loss. Can you want to speak on that? Man, listen. Me was my boy, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, rest in peace to him. Mike was my dude. I don't think you would find anybody to say anything bad about that dude, man. Period. Because the way I see it, me, me and him have had conversations about this shit, man. I say, listen, you know, you know, I, you know, me and a couple of the other classmates, man. We do this security shit. We do this personal protection shit, you know, and. We could be there. Like, you know, we know you throw events and stuff like that, man. We could be there. Like, what the hell, you know? I've, in, a, in a sense, I feel like that could have been prevented. But you never know, man. But like I said, I, I'm I'm not trying to worry about that too much. I want, Like I said, I like to focus on the good memories, man. Because, like, any time I had a fight coming up, this dude would buy merch from me. He would buy tickets from me. Like, he would see my mama going around here in her ice cream truck and just would... You know, just will show love just because, man, you know, because that's how cool me and him was. You know, we talk shit to each other, crack jokes on each other. I mean, that's what we do. That's what you do over here. You know, you might you might not necessarily like somebody up here, but over here in the township, I'm going to tell you, what will happen is you and that person, well, I'm not going to say what would happen now because now... This generation of kids that's in the, in the township is completely different than what we were. Like, we could come to you and say, hey, I got a problem with you. We would fight right then. And then after that, it would be over with. I can't tell you how many of them fights I done had. I mean, shit, I done got jumped. I done jumped people. I mean, that's just how it goes over here, man. I mean, but now, you know, every everybody's, everybody's grown now, man. So, you know, we don't do that shit no more. You know, we try to, we try to make sure that... that that everybody's good, man. Like, no bullshit, no drama. Most of us got kids now. Like, and, and it's just, now it's on our love, you know. But back then, man, we were some badass kids. Yeah. Um, right here, it seems like he home, too. I ain't gonna go bother him.
That's my that's one of my uh, high school wrestling coaches house right there. That's Coach Morgan. Shout out to him. Yeah, Coach Morgan was a beast, but uh everybody know man, Coach Bob Coach Bob was that dude, man. Coach Bob definitely worked with the heavyweights a lot. You know, he got us together. Shout out to you, Coach Bob. You know. He actually cornered me my very first MMA fight. When I didn't know nothing, I just literally seen a sign outside that said fighters wanted. I said, okay. I was like maybe 17 or 18. No, I, was 18. I had just turned 18. And I was 357 pounds, and this is when nothing was sanctioned like how it is now. And my first opponent was Ryan King. Yeah, uh, that was fun. Not, you know. You know, I did my thing, of course, like I said, I had no cage experience, but I had my wrestling events, and of course, I had the basic kickboxing that I did as a kid and whatnot, but, and the basic, the wrestling that I did ever since I was five, but, didn't work out in my favor, uh, I ended up training there, I ended up training at, uh, Academy of Pseudo Tai for a long period of time, about four and a half years, um, you know, and, when I saw that I outgrew that program because every time I wanted to venture out and train with other people, it became an issue with my coach at the time. So I seen that I needed to better myself as far as my training. I would get extra work in at the high school with a lot of the guys at the high school that I went to because our coach always welcomed us in with open arms to get extra work in with the, with the new crop of guys. But, um, man, let's fast forward a few years later. Right now, man, I'm one of my best friends, man, is my, is my coach, Zachary Holston, man. He, he gets me together, and then, you know, basketball gets me together with my striking, man, and that's that's just how it is. And with those two guys, we gonna turn this thing around. Like, you know, there's no more, it's no more bullshit, man. Like, it's, it's just time to turn this thing around, you know. I'm 30 years old, and it's now or never. That's the best, best way to put it, it's now or never. I don't look like one of these, uh, supermodel fighter ass dudes like I can't I, I, I never I never understood that shit like these women and other people and the promoters go crazy over these guys that got these super duper looking bodies man and then you get people like Daniel Cormier in MMA or, or Roy Nelson and we beat the hell out of them we not on shit though but we don't get the same recognition as a guy that's built like a, a, a let me see let me let me uh, like a like a dude that's built like Kamaru Usman even though I know Usman probably not on nothing but you get the point or here you go a TJ Dillashaw that big one of the biggest cheaters it is you know guys is built like them and just completely ripped muscle on top of muscle on top of muscle they oh my god they are fighter fighter but then they get a guy that's a little chubby that beat the hell out of them that same guy don't get the same recognition as him because of the way he looks. That shit really does happen. That's another level, another form of body shaming. Like I tell people, like, you know, you, you look at look at look at Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua got put on his ass by Andy Ruiz. And Andy Ruiz looked like he'd been sitting on the couch eating Twinkies and Ho-Hos all day. You know, that the shit is wild, man. Us, us bigger guys do not get respect unless we look like we got chiseled out of stone. That's facts. Which is why I don't too much care for people that look like that. Man, I don't. I mean, I don't want to look like that. Of course, I'm going to drop weight, but I'm not out here trying to look like a guy with a got muscle on top of muscle on top of muscle. That shit is unnecessary to me. It's unnecessary and it's... it's what does it do for you in the long run? Because it seems like everybody that's in shape or in shape, I'm not in shape, I'm a shape, I'm round, okay? Get that, get that right. It seems like everybody that's always super duper muscular, every time they turn around or they go to stretch, they pull in a muscle or something. You don't hear shit like that with us big guys. You don't. The shit is irritating, man, but I mean, hey, to each his own.
how you feel about like fights coming back? Oh man, this is this small time, man. Because like I said, I'm not only a competitor, but I'm a fan, man. I enjoy seeing you know the local MMA fights, man. Like especially like, in the casino or um, the Crystal Guard. It's always good to go see people you know in action, and it's always good to see that our art gets that platform you know we get to go out and show what we got man and then you know people pay to come see us that's that's a good feeling man you know everybody can't say that they can do that you know regardless of what type of reaction you get from people whether they cheer you or whether they boo you i mean at the end of the day they still come especially on a, on a professional level uh, you know they still come and pay to see you grateful for that, you know, because they didn't have to do that, whether they buying a ticket from you directly or they buying it from the promoter, you know, indirectly, you know, it doesn't matter, they still come to see you, and you can only be so appreciative of it, you know, and that's, that's just the way I look at it, and, and now I just wait, man. I did this just a waiting game to see, you know, what opportunities open up for me. Hopefully we get one before the end of the year. You know, that's the plan. To get one before the end of the year and go from there. Do this, even if it's just brushing you. If I can feel anything from this, I know if I throw this, it's gonna connect. You don't see that a lot, especially boxers in MMA, because they do this all the way out here. Throw that wild ass haymaker. No, if I'm going to Set up that power shot. If I'm gonna go for the face, body, I'm gonna be in my stance. If I'm here, here, here. Keeping it in front of him. Not necessarily throwing it, but I'm keeping it in front of him. Because if he packs it away, I can kind of still judge that distance. But if I'm getting close, if I can feel this, I don't know if I throw this, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm already home. So it's just like that, measure twice, cut once. Another thing, we already know you dropped your hand. I know, I know, I know. You drop your hand off a lot here, then I'll end up here, and then I'll do this. Mm hmm So, so but like, I'll, I'll fight like this a lot, though. Like, and, and, I mean, it's not, I don't think Philly it's Shell, a bad thing. Philly like, Shell is not bad. Because, like, when they, like, he, he, I know, especially with uh, the other guy, not the new guy. The, the he, one, yeah. Yeah, the other guy. Mm -hmm. he, I would fight like this, and he would throw something, and I would roll my shoulder, and I'd come back and just flick the jab up, even though it's going to come from here. That's um, that's Philly show. No, I'm saying, but it would come from up there. He would do this and wouldn't move, but then I'd tag him with this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what it's called. It's called Philly show. 